Hi, my name is Roger. How are you doing? Yet another episode of Time for Reflection. So let's start the timer and talk about frequencies. What are frequencies? Or what is sound? Well, sound is vibrations. It could be in air, water, metal, whatever, but we don't go in further into that in this episode. Frequencies are the tones you hear. The unit we count that in is Hertz, named after the German scientist Hermann Hertz, excuse my German, who lived in the 19th century. Hertz is cycles per second. How many cycles per second a tone have determines what tone we get. Low notes have few cycles per second, therefore low numbers. High notes have many cycles per second, therefore high numbers. It says that the human ear can hear from 20 hertz up to 20 kilohertz, 20,000 hertz. If you are over 25 and you can hear over 15,000 hertz, you're in luck because most of us can't. Maybe we can feel it, but we can't hear it. The simplest form of a vibration, sound, is a sine wave, or sometimes called pure tone. That is a tone without harmonics, without overtones. More about that later. Here we have a 50 hertz sine wave, 50 cycles per second, compared to this 10,000 hertz sine wave, 10,000 cycles per second. The wavelength of a 50 hertz cycle is about 6.8 meters or 22 feet. The wavelength of a 10,000 hertz cycle is about 3.4 centimeters or just over one inch. No sound in the universe will ever sound like a sine wave, except for synthesizers that can produce sine waves. All natural sounds, if it's birds, humans, instruments, whatever, also have overtones or harmonics. The harmonics follow the law of physics, the harmonic series, there's, there's nothing you can do about that. It's the law, you can't change it. Every instrument or voice or whatever follows that law. Here I have put some sine waves on top of each other. So we start with a sine wave at 110 hertz. The next tone in the harmonic series is the octave, 220 hertz. The next is the fifth above 330. Then comes the octave again, 440. Then comes sort of a third at 550. And then the fifth again at 660. No natural sound would ever sound like this. Every sound, instrument, voice, whatever, have different amount of harmonics and also different level of the harmonics, how loud they are. Normally, the more open the sound is, a flute maybe, the more or stronger harmonics the sound have. If the sound is nasal, there's fewer harmonics or softer harmonics. And the combined waveform gets very complex. If we zoom in on a 1000 Hz waveform, you can see that the sine wave is very, very simple. When I've combined all the waveforms, the waveform gets much more complicated. This we have to think about when we're mixing, when we are adjusting the sound with an equalizer, for example. And we all need to do that, because if you don't use an equalizer, you are recording in Capital with great microphones in a fantastic room and your name is Al Smith. All we other deadly people, we need to use an equalizer. If you have done a good recording, maybe you don't have to use it much. And use it carefully and only where it's needed. So this is how I would describe the frequency spectra. How I feel about it and what I'm listening for. So let's start at the low end. Below 30 hertz, for me, there's no music. So 30 hertz to 60 hertz, I call the sub bass. These frequencies, you don't really hear, you more feel them. And they can easily be crowded. So be careful and don't put too many instruments in this area. Next is from 60 Hz to 150 Hz. For me, that's the bass frequencies. The bass frequencies I can hear and define what tone, what note the bass have. Here is also the punch of a kick drum, the floor tom, the left hand of a piano, the low string on a guitar. 
150 hertz to 400 hertz is the low mid area. Here is where most instruments and vocal have their keynote, their fundamental notes. Here it's very, very crowded. Often you define this as the muddy frequencies. But somebody said that 200 hertz is the child of the devil. Four hundred to one thousand five hundred hertz are called the mids. Here we have the character and the tone of so many instruments: the singer, the guitar, the piano, even the strings of a bass. Here is also where the nasal frequencies lives. Above that is one thousand five hundred to six thousand hertz. The higher mids. Here we have the clarity, the consonants of the singer, the attack of a drum, the strings of a guitar, but also the harshness. If it feels like the sound hurts your eyes, probably it is in this area. And play with this area a bit, because it can also move the sound forward or back, at least in my opinion. 6,000 hertz to 12,000 hertz, I call the treble, is the brilliance of the cymbals, of the vocals, also the S's of the vocals, be careful. The glitter in the piano, the snares on the snare drum. And above 12,000 hertz, I call air. There is no music in that area, it's all harmonics. Sometimes by lifting 20,000 hertz or even 30,000 hertz, it can feel like you're raising the roof of your room. What happens if we take one of the registers out? Let me show you. I've tried to take out all of the low mids. I couldn't take it out totally, but it's minus 30 dB from 150 hertz to 400 hertz. This is how it would sound. First, the original song. The only thing I know is that I don't know when I fell. And now, when I've cut the low mids. It almost sounds like it's phase issues, and normally equalizers do phase issues also. But you can also hear that the warmth and the wideness of the mix is totally gone. If I take out the higher mids totally, how would it sound? First, the original mix. The only thing I know is that I don't know when I fell. And now without the higher mids. No clarity, no attack, and this mix sounds weak. So that's all, folks. Hope you found that interesting. If you haven't subscribed, please do. If you liked the video, please leave a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, send me a message and tell me what I should do or what I could do better. The Swedish word of today is frequency. In Swedish, it is frekvens. Frekvens. And roger that.